Here we go again, Celebrity MasterChef, the toughest cookery competition on television. It's like the first day at school. <laughs> I'm really scared. They may be famous in their own world, but now they've got to prove how good they are in the kitchen. I'm thinking positive and hoping that I'm a natural. Do we get help? <laughs> That's just going to be a disaster. We've got singers, actors, dancers. But as long as they can cook better than I could dance, we'll be fine. These five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best cooks will make it through. I know I'm coming from ground level and I'm definitely what you would call a project here. So I really am going to give it my best and try really hard. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm one of these people that if I'm set a challenge, I will give it my all. I'm here to learn. And if I can take it from here and into my own kitchen at home, for me, that's a real sense of achievement. I'm a foodie, really. I spend most of my time in the kitchen. I love to cook for family and friends, really, more than anything, yeah. If I am rushed, it all goes to pot. And I'm quite clumsy, just between you and me. I trip over everything, drop things, so there's going to be a lot of that. I would like to be able to stay long enough to learn a bit and to start to enjoy it rather than just being petrified about it. Very warm welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. We know who you are, people at home know who you are. What we're about to find out is whether you can cook or not. <laughs> Your first task is an invention test. Under that cloth, you have a set of ingredients. Make us something that you want to eat, something that you truly love. They've been given pork fillet, chicken wings, butternut squash, wild mushrooms, chilli, dark chocolate, prunes and pears. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, one plate of food. Let's cook. I don't know what to do. And it's a different kitchen, it's not my kitchen. I might try and give it a lick. Oh. <laughs> Emmerdale icon and mum of four, Cherie, likes to cook hearty family food. I'm scared when you come near me, because <laughs> I don't actually know what I'm doing just yet, but hey. I find this quite, quite encouraging. Do you? <laughs> mash. At least you know you've got to get mash. <laughs> You actually seem quite comfortable. No, I'm literally so panicked. I'm doing it. I don't even know what that is, but obviously I know it's a meat. So I'm quite a basic cook. So I just see meat, bit of veg, boom. Not a bad start. Why are you here? I'm a mum of four. If I'm honest, I've fallen out of love with cooking. I, I make sort of the same thing every night, every week. And I want to learn. I want to be able to progress a bit more. I think you're doing fine. Oh, gosh. We'll, All right, we'll mate. see at the end. Thank you. <laughs> a piece of pork, some butternut squash, a bit of mashed potato. Fantastic. There are dangers, of course. But if Cherie's cooking it for her family, she must know how to make mashed potato. Surely. Girls Allowed pop diva Sarah cooks almost every day and likes to make comfort food with a fancy twist. Everyone who knows me knows that I love to cook, so it'd be good to see what I'm capable of, really, under pressure. <laughs> OK, let's do this, bad boy. Come on. Oh. Sarah, you look about as upset as any contestant I've ever seen. I just... I'm a bit overwhelmed. 
I just don't know what the hell I'm doing. What is it you're cooking for me now? I've done a basic sage butter with some mushrooms and some pan-fried pork, so I'm probably going to put in the oven, maybe put some rosemary on top, make it look nice. How does this compare to your day job? Uh, this is very different to my day job. I'm used to being in the studio singing and writing and... Okay. I'll sing your way for it. Let's go. Let's do it. You OK? No. <laughs> Sarah's combination of mushrooms and sage butter with pork are a sound one. But Sarah's enemy is not the ingredients. Sarah's enemy is herself. Oh, I'm shaking. 90s pop sensation Chesney lives in LA with his wife and family. I have three children, so my cooking ability is practical. You know, just get those kids fed. So you could say I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Chesney, what are you making? So I was going to pan fry this pork, butternut squash, put that in the oven. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to make a little bit of mash if I can. And I was going to make a little ragu. And does it all go together? I don't know. You look like you might be a cook. Not at all, to be honest with you, Greg. I might look like I'm calm, yeah. but on the inside it's all kind of like, ah, what am I doing? I like roast vegetables with pork. That's a lovely thing. And then he's making a ragu with mushrooms and chilli. All of it on one plate, it may be just a bit too much. 25 minutes have gone. 35 minutes left. <sighs> Blue Peter and most haunted presenter Yvette was inspired to cook by her Cypriot grandmother. My style of cooking would be home-cooked food. But then, when I get a little bit excited, I might just kick into overdrive, a little bit cocky, bordering, slightly thinking I'm a chef mode. <laughs> I've stuck something in the oven. Don't know what it's going to taste like, but it's a concoction, and I enjoyed putting it together. What have you, what have you put in there? Well, I put in some little roast potatoes with the chicken wings, some peppers, some garlic. Do you cook at home? I do. I cook for the family, and it's either it's hit or miss. Yvette is the only one doing chicken wings when she's serving it with a sauce which I've never heard of before, which is made with mustard, red wine, flour and water. It might be good for hanging up the wallpaper. I don't know how it's going to be for dipping the chicken wings in. Holby City's Tish grew up on a farm in Kent and likes traditional fare. I really enjoyed cooking, but not under pressure. I don't know why it should be so nerve-wracking, but for some reason, it really is. Tish, there's nice smells coming from your bench. Are there? <laughs> what are you That's making? It's a relief, isn't it? Um, well... I slightly swerved. I thought I was going to start off doing the chicken and then I thought, I'm not sure how to present that so that it looks nice, so I'm going to go for, for this What's instead. this? Pork. Whew, phew, that was a moment. And what are you serving it with? Butternut squash and roasted potatoes <sighs> and some rosemary. This is Sometimes. good. Is it? This is good. Oh, good. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm so scared. I don't know why it's so scary. Tish seems sound because she's got herself a lump of pork, which is really heavily seasoned, cooked in lots and lots of butter. That's brilliant. It's the presentation now for Tish. She's going to work out how to get those little potatoes, the piece of pork, and that sauce onto a plate so it looks pretty. You've got 20 minutes left. Really? Chesney, you've finished. I have. And you have 20 minutes left. Yeah. Can you eat it now? Uh. Five minutes left. Five minutes to rescue or perfect what it is you're doing. That's it. Stop. Finished. I take it everyone's gone with the pork then. Has anyone gone with the poultry? Went... Yes. <laughs> I went with the poultry. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only because I didn't know what the pork was. Oh, Amazing. Yeah, it, looks it, amazing. Does. it looks you like a pro has done it. First up is pop star Chesney, who has pan-fried the pork and served it with a mushroom ragu. 
roast butternut squash cubes, a butternut squash and potato mash, a garlic gravy, and a side of garlic bread. Listen, you did all of that and you finished with 20 minutes to go. I'd like to have done half of that and taken the full complement of 60 minutes. Then we may have had something more defined. Sure. Take your time. You season very, very well. It stimulates your palate. You want to keep on diving into it. And considering that it's ugly as sin and you still want to eat it, it's a very, very good thing. Uh, a couple of little things you've got to be really careful of. Watery sauce, watery puree. It, washes out the flavour of the chilli. The one thing it definitely doesn't wash out the flavour of is the garlic, because you have more garlic in here than I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> I like garlic, what can I say? Well, you might <laughs> like it, but right now, I could tell you, I, I could kill Dracula with one little breath. <laughs> I'm not very good with timing, so I just thought, oh my God, I've only got an hour, so like, get it all done. And, um, you know, obviously I was finished really early and I probably should have planned a bit better. <laughs> Holby City's Tish has served her roast pork fillet with rosemary and sage roast potatoes and butternut squash with a creamy mustard and mushroom sauce. I think it looks okay. I love the veg underneath. And there's loads of pepper. Yes. Which is good. Lovely roasted vegetables. And you've got wonderful flavour of rosemary going throughout the whole thing. Great. The sauce, however, is too thick. And I wish you'd have left your pork a little pinker. My issue is cream sauce and roast potatoes. And I think about roast dinner, I think gravy. And, and I think that's where you got to go to. But there's some decent flavours. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. I was really pleased to produce something that wasn't completely disgusting. That was what I expected to do, was some awful dog's dinner. <laughs> Ex Emmerdale actor Cherie has pan fried and roasted her pork with butternut squash mash and a garlic, onion, and mustard sauce. This presentation here is wonderful. Texture of your mash is fantastic. Pork could be cooked a little less. Right. Greg thinks your pork's overcooked. I disagree. I think it's really well flavoured. There's a lovely river of garlic and onions running through your sauce. But the bit in the middle, that mash, is a bit bland. Yeah. You're a mum of a young family and you don't season. No. <laughs> that whole thing needs seasoning. Right. All right, listen. All you've got to do is learn to tell the difference between when you're cooking for the little ones yeah, and when you're cooking for the big ones. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> to cook for these two judges and them to say it was actually all right, I am over the moon. Can't believe it. <laughs> oh, my God. That was pretty good, then. It was great. That was brilliant. Girls Allowed star Sarah's pork is served on a bed of sage and mushroom with a brandy cream and prune sauce. What I'm amazed about is that we've got a plate with some food on it that doesn't look too bad, <laughs> considering your stove has more sauce on it than the plate does. Yeah. Oh, dear. You've got sweetness there from the prunes. Really deep, rich, grown-up sauce with well-cooked pork. However, I would like some rice or some pasta in there just to mop up all the wetness. OK. Start with the plan. Yeah. Imagine it's the same as going on stage. Write your music first before you stand up in front of everybody with a microphone in front of you. I'm quite proud of myself for being able to just knock that together in, in an hour. But I just wish I could have done something more, but I was scared to, really. I just didn't want to overdo it, you know? Finally, it's presenter Yvette, 
who chose the chicken wings, which she's roasted and served with lemon and garlic potatoes, mushrooms and red peppers, and finished it all with a honey glaze and a red wine and mustard sauce. A lemon. Everything's cooked and it's cooked well. The potatoes are crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. However, flavour combinations is, yeah. is, is unusual, to say the least. <laughs> you know, honey and wild mushrooms is, is a combination not to, not to be sampled again. Those potatoes and peppers in a tortilla yeah. would be wonderful. So you can do things with those, those ingredients, yeah. but not with, added with honey. No, OK. Nor a red wine flowery sauce. It was a complete and utter disaster. But at least the chicken was cooked. At least I didn't poison anybody. And I like the taste. Actually, scattered around this kitchen was some decent cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you five again very, very soon. Thanks very much indeed. Off you go. Promising start. Five celebs, and I reckon we've got a couple of good cooks. And one or two of them, they could probably go back to the drawing board. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, really, I did. Really, I really, really fun. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know what I thought. I thought it was mixed emotions for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next round's going to prove incredibly tough for these five. What are they going to be like in the heat and pace and ferocity of a pro kitchen? The five celebs have been split into two teams and are on their way to a busy London restaurant. Yeah, we're told what to do. Yeah. We can cope with that, we can deal with that. Uh -huh. yeah. Singers Sarah and Chesney and actor Cherie will be cooking at 61 in London's Marylebone, where they specialise in Anglo-French cuisine. Service will be run by chef patron Arno Stevens. Today's going to be an incredibly busy day. I can't emphasise it, how important the standards are. Fully booked, so a lot of fun, a lot of drama. Let's get cracking. OK. okay. During today's frantic service, Sarah will be in charge of the starter of Pig on Toast. Oh, my God, trotters! Yeah. Ah! The dish consists of a pâté made from pig's trotter and ear, set mushrooms and parmesan served on a rye crouton with trumpet mushrooms, nashi pear, and a caper and raisin puree. Here's your pig mix. That's been pressed. Yep. I'm going to place that onto a rye crouton and literally pop that in the oven. Done. That'll take seven to eight minutes. Caper and raisin puree. All you're going to do is not too much of the puree. It's really, really strong. So, pig out. And then you want to just place the garnish that you've already dressed. Like so. And then your trumpet mushrooms on there as well. Nashi pear, three to a portion. Pig on toast. Voila! OK. Woo! OK, this one's like a piece of art. OK. The only bit I'm scared about is the dollopy bits. OK. <laughs> You'll be fine. I'm just worried, you know, in case like, I get a nervous hand, you know, you've got to have steady hands. This is all about presentation and it looks really fiddly. OK, Chesney, so, squab pigeons. The squab pigeon is served with snails, crispy croutons, a cauliflower puree, finished with pickled garlic and a pigeon jus. The main focus of this is going to be how we cook the pigeon. So, straight into a pan. Probably about two minutes on each side of the breast. And we're just going to baste that bird very, very nicely. Three minutes in the oven. Your snails, basically what you're doing here is you're shallow frying so they get uber crispy. Next stage is to plate up. This is the tricky bit. So cauliflower puree on the plate, 
step palette. And you just... Uh, OK, you your lovely crispy snails in amongst your croutons. Okay. Your pigeons come out of the oven. Knife straight into the meat. Straight down. And that will release the breast. OK. And then we just sauce the plate. And there you have it. That's a lot to remember. Wow. <clears throat> I'm a little overwhelmed, actually. I'm literally using everything here, the oven, two pans, the grill, lots of little detail. Whew. OK. OK, Cherie, you have the tuna dish. Cherie will be cooking the albacara's tuna loin with a red pepper emulsion, shiitake mushrooms, a confit tomato and chive dressing, and a tempura spring onion. We're going to place the tuna into a water bath. Literally place that straight in there. OK. Shiitake mushrooms, a nice touch of colour on there. Yeah. Now we're going to add the sake. The tuna's ready. Straight into a nice hot pan. Yep. So literally, you're counting to eight seconds on each side. Okay. Dress the plate with the, the kilo pepper emulsion. And just straight down the middle. Allowing the knife to do the work. Turn that up like that. Place that onto your, your, your plate. To that, we add the tempura of spring onion. And there's your dish. Wow. I am worried about the presentation, because that kind of freaks me out. Even getting the slicing of the tuna correct is quite nerve-wracking. In the heart of London's Mayfair, actor Tish and television presenter Yvette are at Novikov which specialises in Japanese and Chinese cuisine. Hello! Hello! They'll be working under the watchful eye of head chef Jeff Tyler. We've got a uh, hundred of the most discerning customers for lunch. It's going to be a really busy service. If you want to follow me, we'll get started, all right? Hey. Good, hey, let's nice do it. Man, nice man. <laughs> Tish is responsible for the highly prized Japanese Wagyu beef. This Wagyu is uh, over 200 pounds a kilogram. Okay. Each customer today is going to be paying 100 pounds per portion for this. All right. Oh, I can't believe it's so expensive. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> beef in the world. The beef is placed on a charcoal smoking bowl and topped with black Perigord truffle and served with chili daikon radish, a garnish of coriander cress, red onion and amaranth flour with a teriyaki ponzu sauce. OK. Mm -hmm. Take the beef. Yep. On the grill, we want to sear the beef, get colour, get caramelisation, make it look tasty. So that's getting on to sort of medium rear now. All right, we're going to bring it over here. You really want it to be all beautifully cut, same size. OK? All right. Slide under on the plate. Easy peasy. OK. Now on the pass here, mm -hmm. we, um, we have the nice little pot here. Going to sit with a piece of charcoal, fresh Perigord truffle, shaved oh, over the top. Wow. That's and the amazing. salad gets put on top. That gets put on there. OK, look at that. Boom. I'm nervous about how expensive it is. £120 <laughs> slabs of steak, <laughs> which I'm in charge of. Yay! Right, you're going to be dealing with something called cobia. The grilled cobia fillet is topped with a coriander and garlic dressing, a cherry tomato salsa and a ponzu sauce. The cobia is cooked on a traditional Japanese grill with temperatures of 400 degrees. You're really cooking with feel. 
and there's no real set time to how long you have to leave this okay. on there. Watch out for your fingers because that gets really hot, okay? Yeah. All right, that's done. Put a nice knob of garlic and soy butter on there. Yeah. You imagine how that's going to taste. Wow. Yeah. Uh, coriander and garlic mixed Ooh, with oil. Lovely. Wow, that looks amazing. Doesn't it? Lime garnish. We're going to have the fish leaning on it slightly. Okay. Cherry tomato salsa. Okay, that's there. Yep. Ponzu. All right. Ponzu. Okay, just there. And we're done. I hope that I can do that. I believe in you. I think you can. It's midday, and over in Marylebone, restaurant service is about to begin. <laughs> I can't even work the timer. Oh, my gosh. OK, take on two covers, two octopus, followed by two pigeon. Here we go. All right. We're off. Chesney's dish relies on the perfect cooking of the pigeon. So how many minutes now on this two pigeon? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, great. And you've got another two on order here as well. Panic. Chesney now has the tricky task of carving the pigeon breast. Close to the bone, that's it. Take your time, take your time, do it nicely, follow the bone. Okay, get another pigeon down. Because there's way too much meat left uh, on that, yeah? Can't use that. Okay, so start again. Start again. Thank you, chef, sorry. I'm a little overwhelmed right now, I have to admit. I'll tell you what, I will take going up on stage in front of thousands of people over this any day. It's quite a task, this. The plating of the dish also requires a perfect eye. OK, no, 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 no. Let's start that again, Chesney. OK. okay kind of, yeah, too far to one side, OK? Yeah, OK. Have a little bit more central, so we start again. OK. That's OK. And, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, can we go with two octopus, one pig straight away, please? OK, pig going in. And then after that, you got one pig, one beetroot straight up. Five minutes. Yeah. Chef. It's now Sarah's turn to get to grips with her pig on toast. Sarah, how long was that, please, for one pig? I think 30 seconds. OK, and then you've got another one straight after that, OK? Yeah, yeah. Keep it nice and neat. I need a bit more puree on that plate. It's a little bit tight. I okay. thought you Be might a bit more generous. That. OK. Backs, backs, backs. There you go. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to send it back, sir. Yeah, got to do that again. That's dropping, let's see. See how that's dropped there? We'll do that again. Again? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. What do I do? It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Backs. It's dropping. It's dropping. What do I do? Pate falling off the toast is unacceptable at this level of cooking. Right. Okay, that's better. That's thank better. you, thank you, thank okay. you, chef. Right, let's get cracking on the next one. The pressure is also on for Cherie. Cherie, you've got three tuna. Yeah, three. Correct, three tuna. Yes, chef. She has to cut the tuna loin with absolute precision. Okay, you ripped it a little bit there. Let the knife do it with no pressure. It's just crumbling. No. Turn it around. Yep. No. Stop, 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 stop. Yep. No. We're going to have to get another one down. Get another one down. OK, we're going to have to start that all over again. Sorry. I didn't slice it neat enough, so it kind of starts to break and it doesn't look good on the plate, so totally my fault. Just let the knife do the work again. Yeah, that's so much better, so much better. OK, cool. Yeah, lovely. Perfect. Good, much better, so much better. Go. I like the buzz of it, it's fun. I say fun, stressful, but good. <laughs> Back in Mayfair, 
Yvette and Tish are already in the thick of service. OK, Tish, things are heating up a little bit for you. OK. In total now, you've got two sirloin medium away and five on course two. All right. OK, try not to damage the meat too much so you can see your sorry. marks left oh, in there. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. We want to treat it like a baby. Sure. Just give your other one a quick flip now. Now let's get it served, yeah? Thanks. Well done. Let's have a quick look at that beef in there. My goodness, that's perfect. Brilliant. Well done. Yay. Good. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So exciting. Meanwhile, Yvette's trying to cook her cobia fillet on the 400 degree heat of the grill. A little bit of colour there. Yeah, sorry, I burnt that bit. You've burnt that bit. That's a no go. Let's start again, please. Right, let's get another one on. We're a bit behind now. Okay. I am not enjoying this one bit. Right, how's that one looking? Not, not perfect, but not too bad. We could probably get away with that. Okay. Now, let's finish it up, get it on a plate to the past. Your ramekin, sauce, straight to the past, yeah? Come on. You've still got to get another one on. Move a bit faster. Yes, Chef. Good. Right, let's get those away, please. is the equivalent of torture to me. Torture. Oh, how these guys do it. Oh, my God, horrendous. In Marylebone, service is in full swing. Watch your backs, watch your backs. And Chesney is inundated with orders for his squab pigeon. OK, in total, you have... I'm completely lost. you got seven on order. Panic. Whoop, stop, Chesney. Look at where your knife's going. Ah. Half of that breast is going to be cut. So have a look at what you're doing and have it more flatter, OK? Not bad. Not bad at all. That's much, much better. Beautiful. So straight across. Take your time. Make it nice. Very good. And stop. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's the best one you've done. Boom! The best one you've done. Great. OK, so croutons on there. Now, let's not slow it, slow down. No, no, exactly. Keep the yeah. momentum. You've got to work quicker, Chesney, otherwise I know, the food's going to go cold. With you, I'm with you, Bridget. Exactly how we showed you. If it's cold, I will send it back. OK, OK. You're nearly there. You're nearly there. Go. Sarah's pig on toast is also proving popular. But it's exhilarating at the same time. Okay. Go, 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 go. Okay. And then the next one. You're so close. How do you think I've done? Really well. I'm not going to deny it. I really, have really potential. well. Sit a little bit clean. Off you go. Well done, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Bags. <laughs> While Sarah can now put her feet up, Cherie's still got to get her last dishes out. Last push, yeah? You've got to keep going, keep the momentum, keep the concentration. You're almost there. You're so, so close. I feel like I'm in a, a rhythm now and I can flow. It's good. I think once I stop, my head will probably explode, but at the minute, I feel good. Easy. Yeah, it makes me more nervous than anything. Yes. Absolutely perfect. OK, great. Your jus is ready. Good. Service, Chef. OK. Ready? 
Well done. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Very so good much. job. Very good job. Thank well you done, so much. You did really, really well. Thank you. Did really, really well. Loved oh, it. Oh my goodness. I did you enjoy that? I loved it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely I did. loved it. That was pressure. Yeah. But wow. When I go out and eat at a restaurant from now on, I am going to appreciate every single little bite. <laughs> Over in Mayfair, service is also drawing to a close. So you need four pieces of fish all day. Don't forget the one under the salamander. <gasps> right, that'll be perfect now. Just lift that up, put it on the plate, and it's away. Quickly, quickly, quickly. There's the one. If I don't lose weight after this, I shall be very upset. It's horrendous. It's like working in a full-on sauna, but with your clothes on. Yes, You're chef. handling it beautifully. Keep yes, it up. Okay, that's Good look at that. Now it's all eyes on Tish for her last dishes. We need those two wagyus pretty fast. The customer's getting a bit antsy. We've got to get that up to the pass quickly. Try and get that cooking spot on, OK? Give it a little bit more salt on top there, just a smidge. That's the one, perfect. And you're up to the pass. Let's have a quick look here. Cooking is spot on. Yay! Well done. That's Fabulous. not an easy piece of beef to cook. Woo, thank you. Well done. Ladies, I'm very, very impressed. Thank that you That was so a busy much. service, and you've handled things very, very well, all right? Thank, Thank you very much. Love, love having you in the kitchen. Thank you so right. much. I passionately loved every minute of this. In all honesty, it was horrendous. The pressure, the heat. So I, I'd be lying if I went, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. No, 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 no. Service may be over, but there's no let up for the celebrities. Welcome back. Good to see you. Right now, I think, is a very telling moment because it's your chance to cook your own dishes. Two courses and you've got just one hour to do it in. At the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. An exciting day. We're about to find out how good they really are because they're under massive pressure. Two courses in one hour. That's tough. Come on, great quicker, great quicker. I feel really nervous. I think it's because it's our own dish today. Because I think if they don't like it, then it's probably a little bit more heartbreaking. Sheree, what is it about these two dishes you think are fabulous? Well, I, I'm making stuff for you that I would make at home. You know, I'm not super fancy. Um, I'm looking around, people making own pasta and stuff, and I'm, I don't know how to do that yet, so... Oh, right. <laughs> what are you making? Pan-fried sea, sea bass with a warm salad. And then for my dessert, I'm doing an apple crumble cake with vanilla mascarpone. How long does it take to bake this? I need 35 minutes, definitely. It's just to bake? To bake. It takes 15 minutes to make. Whoa, that is cutting it I fine. I know. Don't. <laughs> Cherie's menu sounds really interesting. Actually, we've got fish and chips and apple crumble. Apple crumble cake? A lovely idea. But how's she going to make it look pretty? You've had 15 minutes! I'm raring to go! Don't expect me to be clean. There's going to be breadcrumbs flying here, like spring onions, everything. It's going to be a manic hour. What are you making, Sarah? Fish cakes. Uh, the sauce I made up myself, it's like a white wine sauce, but I added chives and some crushed walnuts to it. The dessert is the lemon syllabub, but I've, with my own twist, keeping it quite simple because I'm not an expert at desserts just yet. Who have you fed this to? My my mum, my boyfriend, my me. <laughs> I'm so overeating fish cake, believe you me. <laughs> 
as simple as a fish cake and a sauce sounds, as simple as a syllabab sounds, they are actually time-consuming things. Sarah is against the clock. Oh, this is not good. Why don't you do that in two bits, Sarah? Yeah. Well, no? You're happy with one big fish cake? Yeah, because otherwise you're going to say it's a starter. Right, OK. I'm really seriously, just between us, hoping that somebody makes a bit of a bigger trip up than I perhaps will today, and therefore I could, you know, sort of like, as in a horse race, come from a surprise at the back and come through in the home straight. Yvette, good to see you. Nice to see you too, as always. What's your dish? Baked salmon with crushed potatoes and garlic, asparagus and a watercress sauce. Pudding? Pudding, I'm redeeming myself. Because back in the 80s when I was a Blue Peter presenter, I tried to make a pancake live on air and it went horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. So I'd like to redeem myself and try and make a proper pancake. I know a bit trying to redeem herself, but a pancake? A pancake with lemon and sugar? Tossing! Oh, Yay! Yay! I've redeemed myself. It might not taste very nicely, though. You're halfway. You've got 30 minutes. It's good for the old muscles. Today, I'm going to be attempting pasta a la vongole and poached pears. I chose to do the vongole because it's one of my favourite things to eat. I'd never cooked it, I always only ever ordered it. If I was going to have to practice it again and again, I might as well try and practice something that I enjoy eating. Sis, you're looking a little bit manic. What's happening? <laughs> a bit manic. I got a bit behind my, my pasta. Have you, you make pasta usually? No, no, I've learnt it for this. Which is I why see. it's a bit... Oh. <laughs> I don't want to put you under pressure, but if these two things were on a menu, I'd be ordering them. Maybe not so much after this. <laughs> One of my favourite things in the whole world is spaghetti vongole. Poached pears in red wine, fantastic. If these two dishes work, they are crowd pleasers. I feel like a one-trick pony, you know. I've practised this one, I can do this. I feel like when you come on to do one song, drop the microphone, run off. Right, I'm off, I retire. That's kind of where I am at the moment. <laughs> There's nothing in the future. Chesney, what are you making? I'm making pan-fried sea bass and homemade gnocchi, followed by ricotta donuts with melted chocolate and blood orange zest. Do you, do you make this regularly? No, this is all new for me, Greg. Tisney, can I just say, this is very ambitious for a chap that doesn't do that much cooking. <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to realise that now. I like Chesney's menu. It's showing skill. It's a little bit adventurous. Yeah. Last time, he threw it all on a plate. I hope today we've got a bit of style. You've got just ten minutes. Three minutes! Just about enough time to boil an egg. No, that's not, not really, not when I've got everything else going on. That's it! Stop! Finished. <laughs> that looks amazing! <gasps> wow! Oh, yeah, well, wow. it didn't quite go to plan. Oh, my God, this It was a bit amazing. of a rough job. Tish, bring your plates up, please. Tish's main is spaghetti alla vongole, with clams and cherry tomatoes, topped with parmesan and served with a rocket and baby gem salad. Your pasta's soft and perfectly cooked, and the sweetness of tomato and the lovely saltiness and freshness you get from the clams is delightful. Oh, thanks. For me? Love it. <gasps> Love it. So chuffed. Thank you very much. It's salty, it's rich, it's got loads and loads of pepper across the top of it, a little bit of spice in the background. Love it. Get rid of the cheese. OK. Tish's dessert is poached pear in a red wine reduction, spiced with nutmeg and star anise, and served with cream. 
looks fantastic. I love that simplicity. Oh, my God. Good in there. When the juice of that perfectly cooked pear comes flooding into that cream, red wine and spice, it's delicious. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really pleased for you. You've set the bar high here, Tish. <laughs> oh, only downhill from here, then. <laughs> it was so exciting. It was so great. I couldn't have asked for nicer, more generous comments. <laughs> What's quite strange, if I look at both these dishes, this dessert of yours is all about presentation, whereas your fish cake is nothing about presentation. The smoked haddock, spring onion and leek fish cakes are served with a walnut, chive and white wine sauce. I really like the flavour of the fish with the crispy panko breadcrumbs. I think that's very, very nice indeed. However, I really don't like walnuts in there. I mean, walnuts have got a strong flavoured oil. Yeah, walnuts in your sauce, it doesn't work. Uh, your fish cakes are wet. The whole thing's become a bit pureed and a, a bit of a mess. Her dessert is a lemon syllabub with lemon liqueur-soaked raspberries topped with candied lemons and a raspberry and mint garnish. <laughs> a bit too much lemon cello. I believe that to be delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Creamy vanilla, sharp with fruit, loads of booze, and the pieces of lemon, I think, are delightful. Thank you. I, 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 there's so much limoncello in there, I can't even remember what I've eaten. <laughs> Greg absolutely loves it. For me, I like a really lovely little biscuit with it, just to yep. give me a bit of texture and a bite. There were fair comments, not what I expected. And they thought walnuts was weird, but I was trying to be quirky. Cherie's pan-fried sea bass is topped with the crispy skin and a red pepper pesto and is served on sautéed potatoes and a warm salad of red pepper, red onion and sage. I like the sweetness of peppers and red onions against that fish. I like the strong flavour of your pesto. I think that's a really nice accompaniment. Okay. The dish needs to look better. It needs to look smarter. Okay. I've never eaten sage with onions and peppers before, but it's a combination I'm going to take home with me. From fish to cake. John, <laughs> would you give me a hand carrying this over? <laughs> For dessert, Cherie has made an apple crumble cake with vanilla mascarpone. Wonderful, wonderful flavours of cinnamon, sharp, sweet Granny Smith apple and vanilla cream. However, your sponge, that's dry. Yeah. I love the flavours of your cake. Serve it as a pudding with custard or with syrup. Do you know what? Make it into a dessert. I'm really proud of what I served. For them to say that it was nice, wow. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh my God. Yvette's main is baked salmon served with crushed new potatoes and garlic, asparagus, and a watercress cream sauce. Your fish is cooked really, really well indeed. And that sauce is actually a very good accompaniment for both the asparagus and the salmon. It's almost a hollandaise. The salmon is still lovely and moist in the middle. The asparagus I'm not a fan of. It's not cooked enough and it feels to me as it's sort of there as a stranger. Yvette's dessert 
is a pancake with lemon and sugar. Now, this pancake, I think, is a cop-out. Mm. You'd have to push yourself a little bit harder. Yeah, it, it's, it's a pancake. It's a bit too thick. It could probably do with a bit more sugar, in my opinion. You've left us questioning whether you can actually make desserts or not. I agree. The comments, in my opinion, were definitely fair. Um, in fact, a little bit too nice, to be honest with you. <laughs> I can see those donuts going. <laughs> Where did you come from? This yeah. looks fantastic. Wow, thank you. Chesney's main is crispy skin sea bass, served on a ragu of wild mushrooms, asparagus, and gnocchi with a wild garlic leaf sauce. The flavors are amazing because you've got woody mushrooms, you've got the earthiness coming from those shallots, and then you've got a beautifully cooked piece of fish which has been smothered with wild garlic. It is really very, very, very good. And should that I get that in a restaurant, I would be more than happy. Wow. My, I, I love it. <sighs> I absolutely love it. If you've only just started cooking, you may have a natural talent, Chesney. Wow, I'm blown away, boys. Chesney's dessert is ricotta donuts topped with cinnamon and blood orange zest and served with a dark chocolate sauce. I want to eat the whole lot because they look great. Well, you'd mull them all day long, mate, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, you just get, get at them like there's no tomorrow. Crispiness on the outside, nice soft sponginess in the middle with a dark, rich chocolate sauce. The whole thing comes alive. Chesney, I'm really impressed, mate. Wow. Ricotta donuts, never had them before. I think they're delicious. I, I, I'm sort of dumbstruck. This is beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Chesney. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Wow. Oh, there's a couple underneath here. <laughs> it was more than I could ever have wished for. <laughs> I'm slightly kind of uh, blown away by it, to be honest. <laughs> Go help yourself. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. Oh, my God. John and I now have got to make a big decision because we can't take all of you through to the next round. Off you go. Thank you. Well done, everyone. Oh, oh, didn't we all do well? Oh, sorry, didn't we do well? You, Chesney oh, Hawks. Chesney. Oh, oh my God. He's a chef. I'm really impressed with this bunch. We tasted some really, really good food and a fair bit of ambition out there as well, John. Good round. I'm blown away by Chesney. The presentation was great, the flavours were great. That was really, really good. That fella looks like he's got what it takes. So Chesney stays. Chesney's brilliant. My next one is Tish. Yeah, I agree. Love the Vongole. She did that very well. And then she just had the courage to give us a poached pear. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Cherie's dishes need tidying up. But actually, both of us loved her food. That leaves the conversation between Sarah and a vet. I think that Sarah is being uh, overambitious. She's not really delivering anything with any clarity. But I like Sarah's dessert. I liked the cream. And I, I like the limoncello. Yvette made a very nice sauce to go with very well cooked salmon. My disappointment comes from a pancake. I have to tell you, my very very young children can cook a pancake, and they would probably do it better than a vet did it. If I did get through, I'd definitely up my game. I think I'll have to start practising more at home. 
overall today was tough. I don't know what my chances are now. I really don't. Who stays? Who goes? We made our decision. The person leaving us is a vet. Quite right, so. Aww, <laughs> thank you, no, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm proud of myself. I think I did okay. And I can actually say I've been a contestant on MasterChef. Well done. Oh, no, I so thought it was going to be me. <laughs> I'm amazed. They've seen some sort of potential to keep me, so hopefully it can onwards and upwards. It's just such a, a relief to be through. I didn't want to be the first one to go. I'm elated. It was an amazing experience. So, yeah, I'm absolutely I'm chuffed a bit. <laughs> I can't believe I made it through the first round. So, yeah, the journey continues, so very excited. Next time... Where do I go? Where do I go? The four celebrities have to work in teams. I'm going nuts! I'm going nuts! Wow, it's hot. I mushroomed up to my eyeballs. Before cooking their best two courses. <laughs> it's so exciting. To stay in the competition. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Whoa.